Kuang buta muka bisa Kuku bali neng no laki Ninara hamoyoni sema Yesu Yesu And Father, we worship you this morning. We confess that your promises are true. We confess that you are God, highly exalted and magnified. Thank you, Jesus. And so this beautiful morning, we gather before you to thank you, to exalt you, our mighty God, to love you, our King in glory, to extol you, awesome, mighty God. And so we decree and declare this morning that we have no other God but you. Have your way in our midst. Minister to every child of God that has mm. come into your house. Mm. I pray that you touch everyone that needs your touch. Oh, yes. Everyone that is uh, desiring healing this morning. Oh, Father, may the healing of God flow in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone that is desiring a supernatural visitation. Our God in this service, you are here with us. Supernatural touch and visitation for your children. In the mighty name of Jesus. Any other kind of miracle that your children desire. Father, in your presence we are sorted. And we give you glory, we give you honor. We thank you for you are here with us. It is in Jesus' mighty name. I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together and worship our God and our King. Amen, amen. Please, turn to the person next to you and tell them, the Lord bless you so much. Turn to the other one, tell them the Lord bless you so much. Amen. And you're welcome um, to take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for coming uh, to this wonderful service. We bless the Lord. Amen. You're looking good this beautiful day. At this point... I want to um, thank God for our bishop who is with us this morning, who is going to bring to us the word of God. Please put your hands together and bring on our bishop. Amen. Amen. Karibu bishop. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, again we thank you, we bless your mighty holy name, we give you all the glory and honor for our gathering even this morning, this first service at Nakuru Happy Church. Thank you, dear Lord God, for the week you gave us, and thank you, dear Lord God, for this day, minister to us, dear Lord God, even as we have prayed, and we continue to pray for the people who may not be feeling well, wherever they may be, dear Lord God. God, we pray 
minister to every one of them and touch their lives. Thank you, dear Lord God, even as your word says in Exodus 15 and 26, you are the Lord that healeth us. And also in Isaiah 53 and chapter 10 verse 5, you, yes, Lord, you say by your stripes we received and we continue to receive our healing. Blessed be into your mighty holy name. Thank you for your security over our lives. Every single day we live. Oh yes, we live because of your grace and your mercies. Dear Lord God, continue to minister. Oh, we pray for the people that are gathered with us today and they are not with us. May you minister to them or whoever they may be. In the mighty name of Jesus, those who need your consolation, give them consolation. Those who need your healing, heal them, dear Lord God. We give you all the glory and honor. Thank you, precious Lord. Even as you continue in this service, we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We are so grateful to God for, uh, for, for this service. You may be seated. Please, you people who are here at Nakuru Happy Church, we thank uh, all of you friends who are watching uh, online, however you may be. Join us in this service and we pray that the Lord will minister to you. Well, I want to share with you today a very, very interesting message that will bless your heart and I pray it will inspire you and I pray you will be full of gratitude for all the people the Lord has given or have a, has brought, you know, by, you know uh, uh, to you in your life since you were small. I'm, I'm, I'm having a message. I hope I'll finish it. I'm calling it Connectors of Greatness. Can you say Connectors of Greatness? Yes, can you shout it from there? Connectors of Greatness. You know, I have learned or have realized, or even all of us possibly we, we, we are aware, there are people that the Lord has put in our, in our, uh, in our, in our, in our sphere of influence, or in our interaction, or in our connection, you know, uh, that have meant a lot in our life. I'm going to, to share with you in a moment. But why are they, this is set of groups, because they are groups I'm going to share with you. Why are they called connectors of greatness? It is because they are contributing to the well-being of your life, to the destiny of our lives, and uh, that's the reason why I'm calling them connectors of greatness. I don't know whether you believe you have some greatness in you. And uh, I want you to see this. Let me first read for you the word of God in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. The book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Again, uh, the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 I want you to, to see it, you know, and, uh, you know, and I pray that, uh, you know, our, uh, our uh, technical uh, person can uh, project that verse in big, uh, in big, uh, in big fonts so that all of us can see and you can read it for yourself. That's the reason why it is good to see what you read. Thank God your eyes are functioning well and you can see whatever you read. And... Uh, it is says, and actually is the verse you know very well, uh, you know, when we, we talk about it. Then God is saying, let us make man in our image to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the, the things on the earth, over every creeping thing. Uh, excuse me, I, uh, in a, ma a minute here, I'm still reading this thing. Uh, even creeping thing that creeps on the earth. It is the Lord, I want you to see the intention. That is a very powerful verse. Every time I read it, I see it heavily loaded. It's a heavily loaded verse of the Bible. The book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Talking about the idea of God. Talking about the purpose of God. 
talking about uh, the intention of God. You know, words are powerful. That the reason why the Bible tells us in Proverbs 18 and uh, is it 18, 21, talking about uh, our tongue, you know, has the power of life and death. The words we speak have, uh, have the power to kill and have power to give life. And now here is God himself talking. It is the Holy Trinity. You know, God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They are talking in times, uh, in, in the eternities, uh, in, in the eternities past. And they are saying, let us make a man. Let us create a man in our image and in our likeness. When we are thinking about God, uh, I want you to understand the attributes of God. He is almighty. He is all powerful. He is omnipresent. That means he is everywhere, anytime. You cannot restrict him to a specific area, any geographical area. He is everywhere, wherever he wants to be. And he, you know, we have said he is almighty and he is eternal. It is one of his attributes to be eternal. He was there in the years past. He, you know, in the eternity past, actually. And he will always be here now and the future. He does not die. And he cannot die. And we will continue influencing the affairs of men as long as we live. And even after we leave this world and we go to heaven, I want you to know, we shall continue living with him. You know, he is eternal. And he himself, having all these attributes, I'm just touching some of them. You know, and he says, let's create a man in our image, in our likeness. Let's give this man some e eternity. Let him not die. Let it give him something, you know, of a virtue. Let us make him a virtuous person. Let us make him somebody who can respond. Oh, yes, to what we want him to respond to. You see, and uh, this is a part of greatness I'm talking about. The Lord is saying, let's create a man in our likeness, in our image. And uh, not only that, let's also give him dominion. Let, him, let us give him authority. Let us give him power. Oh yes, to rule over everything we are creating or we have created. This God who is speaking. Let's give, uh, let's give this person. Let, but first, let me, say, let me talk about, uh, you, you know, what makes us uh, Lily to be very great. One of the things, we have been given the Lord after creating man. He breathed into him and made him a living soul. The spirit of God was put in us. In other words, we have a component of our life which we call spirit. This is spirit which we have has the ability to access and to relate with God. A component of us is his spirit. There is soul, there is body, you know. But let us concentrate on the spirit. The spirit, you know, the spirit the Lord put in us, we can access and relate to God by that spirit. We have the ability, we have the capability to do that. The other one I want you to see, we are able to know what is right and what is wrong by the spirit the Lord has put in our life. We can make choices for our destiny. You know, we have been given that ability by that spirit that operates in us. You see, and again, that spirit that has been given to us makes us people who will live forever. We have life beyond the grave. Can you say amen? Yeah, we are not just going to live in this world and you think you have come to an end. We are not created as animals. We are not created as other creatures. That once they die, that's the end. Their history is done in this world. Our history or our lives continues even after this life. That's the reason why we can talk about uh, we have been given the ability to make a choice. And the choice you make determines where you, you spend your eternity. You see? And there are only two places according to the scripture where we can spend our eternity in the years to come, either with God or with the devil, forever and ever. So the choices you make, the choice you make, and by the way, this is not, the, it is not a choice that is made for us by God. God leaves us to operate, to exercise 
you know, our, our chores. What do I want? It's just like the way you go to, to a, a, a mall or you go to a place you want to buy things. You, there are so many things over there. What do you do? You look at the things of your taste, of your preference, and then you buy according to what you want. And sometimes the things you like, other people don't like them. You know, I'm just reminded we had taken somebody to see some property on sale. You know, in one area, there were two properties that, were, that are being sold. You know, two pieces of land. You know, one has a, a home and one has another, you know, house that is not completed. And I got the shock of the day when, you know, the, I was told this person we had taken, he is choosing where a home had been built. For me, when I looked at the two pieces of property, I would not have bought that one if I needed to buy. I would buy, you know, the, the other one because it pleased me. My choice was, was gravitating towards, you know, another, another piece of property. But the people are different. God has created us different, uh, uh, different beings. And uh, because we are different beings, we make uh, different choices. And uh, when it comes to the choices of your destiny, it uh, depends on you. Do you want to follow God? Do you want to belong to God all the days of your life? Do you want to spend your eternity with God or with the devil? We cannot help you. You know, we may suggest to you. We may even try to convince you. Even we may try to persuade you, but uh, ultimately, it is you as an individual. You make a choice and say, this is the path I will follow in all the days of my life. This is my decision. It is just like marriage. You know, you know if you're marrying, let's say you are a lady and you are of age to marry. Or you are a man and you are of age to marry. You know, and there are a lot of people that need to be married. You see, but you choose only one. You know, if we see the one you chose or possibly the one you agreed to marry, you know, for me, possibly I would have said, well, possibly that is not the one. You know, and another one who have said, well, possibly not that, that is not the one. But uh, you made a choice. It is your individual choice. It is your own, um, uh, it uh, depends on your own prerogative and whatever God has given you. So we are different. But uh, the choice we make, that, you know, the, uh, 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 it uh, depends on us. And God has given us that is spirit. The spirit in us. You know, that is spirit is eternal. Our body will die. You know, everything that is material will die. But the spirit God puts in you, that is the one to live forever and ever. Now, that is a part of your greatness. God has given you spirit has given you spirit that is eternal. You know, you are created above all other beings. You are superior. You are not uh, just a worm kind of wriggling in the dust of the earth. You are so important as far as God is concerned. Even has, uh, has, uh, has uh, even has, uh, uh, how do I put it, uh, has also timed your duration. He has said, yes, you are alive or not. You know, you are alive in this world will be temporary. You spend uh, a life with your mortal body. This, uh, we call it uh, outside tabernacle. The body, this body will function. It will give you, you know, it will help you to live in this environment called earth. But after this life, you have to be clothed. Your spirit will be clothed with another glorious body. Even we don't know how it will be like. But one thing we know, our spirit is eternal. Our spirit does not die with us. The moment this body dies, your spirit remains. And your spirit starts going to its direction. You go straight to be with the Lord. If you had made up, made up your mind to live with the Lord all the days of your life. Well, if you did not do that and you allow devil, you know, to be your ally, to be your companion, to be your buddy, then unfortunately, you know, you spend all your days, all your days without end with the devil. Well, I, I, I know many people don't like that. I don't like it either. 
Even I don't like telling you that. But that is the reality. That is a part of our greatness. When we are talking about our God giving us uh, something that will make us great. Living forevermore. Yeah, and uh, we are able to know God, uh, to choose what is right, what is wrong. We can make choices of, for our destiny, you know, and we will live forevermore. Well, I am limited uh, with the time. So let me move to the other aspect I want you to see. When we are talking about, uh, uh, you, are, you know, your greatness. Another a part or another component of your greatness, of our greatness, dominion. And the Lord said, these people we are creating, these men we are going to create, let's give him dominion. Let's give him authority. Let, let us give him power uh -huh. over everything that is created. Well, that the dominion that the Lord was giving us was to give us authority to control our circumstances. Whatever circumstances we are finding ourselves in, like in now, humanity, you know, all humanity is very busy working out how can we fight coronavirus? How can we change our life instead of being controlled and manipulated by a microscopic organism? How can we, do, you know, how can we overrule and declare and overpower that, uh, that, that, that organism? Scientists are working hard and, you know, very hard to get to that, you see? And uh, scientists and all other people are ever looking for, for, for you know, for, to do things uh, because the Lord has given us uh, wisdom, has given us knowledge, has given us so many things as man. So that we can control our circumstances. Even yourself, you have been given that authority you are talking about. You have been given power. And especially when we look uh, in the natural, I mean in the supernatural. The spiritual man, the spiritual man, we have been given authority. We have been given power to control our circumstances, you know, and uh, to, to restrict our circumstances uh, from uh, kind of having an upper hand against us. You know, the scripture talks about controlling our spiritual destiny. The scripture talks about fighting the enemies of our soul. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 54 and 17, doesn't the Bible talk about no weapon formed against us that shall prosper? And every tongue that is, uh, 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 that is speaking against us, we shall condemn because it's the heritage of the righteous. Are you listening to me? Are you following it? Why? 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 Why should that happen? Because the Lord has given us dominion. We are the ones to exercise that authority. And that's the reason why the Lord told the early apostles, do not leave Jerusalem. Tally in Jerusalem until you endowed with the power from on high. The power of God. The power of the Holy Spirit. Why? You need the power of the Holy Spirit so that you can have dominion. You can, tr you can control circumstances. You can tell the devil, Mr. Devil, you are not welcome in my territory. You are not welcome in my spirit. You are not welcome in my family. You are not welcome in my business. You are not welcome in my ministry. You are not welcome in the church. Can you say amen? Are you getting it? Yeah. Because you have been given dominion, even spiritually. You can tell the devil, the devil that, uh, you know, like, uh, or the demons that like, uh, you know, working hard around the clock to mess up with our life. That's the reason why Jesus had to send his disciples and told them, I want you to go. Go and do the ministry. And as you do the ministry, I want you to bind all demons. And once you bind them, they'll be bound. Yeah. And I want you to heal the sick. That is dominion exercise. You know, when we prophesy, we are doing prophetic declaration. And we are saying, I find myself doing it all the time. And especially this time, uh, you know, my eyes uh, have been a challenge. I've been declaring and saying, yeah, according to the word of God, this is what the word of God is saying. And the word of God gives me authority to quote it. The word of God gives me authority to believe it. The word of God is says in Exodus, for example, 15, 16, even 26, the Lord is saying what? I am 
the Lord that healeth your diseases. So when the enemy attacks us, whatever attack the enemy attacks us with, we stand by that word and we remind the devil of the time. Oh yeah, by, yes, the Lord says, Lord, don't you say you are the one who heals me. Yes, heal my eyes, heal my body, heal me in whatever area, in Jesus' name. By the stripes of Jesus, what happened? By the stripes of Jesus, we received our healing. So every time you are attacked, your body is attacked. Use that authority. Use that authority as, a, you know, as recorded in Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah 53 and verse 5. By the stripes of Jesus, I received my healing. Amen. Can we say together, by the stripes of Jesus, I received and I continue to receive my healing. Amen. You know, I'm just citing some of, uh, some of, the, some of the examples we need uh, to remind ourselves in. It's a part of our greatness. The Lord has given us, you've been given authority. You know, uh, also in the book of Matthew. Matthew 18 and verse 18. Matthew 18 and verse 18. You know, that me, let me read it for you. And I hope uh, uh, our computer guy is able to project that for us. Matthew 18 and verse 18. This is what it says. Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bide on earth, we will be bowed in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth, we will be loosed in heaven. That's dominion. That's a power. That's authority. We have been, God has given us, has equipped us because we are great. He wants us to be great. And he wants us to continue being great people. You see, he does not want our destiny. He does not want our lives to be messed by anything. So he has given us these tools. He has even spoken to us. And he has said, you know what? Because I've given you dominion, you, my children, you, my saints, since I have given you dominion, this is what I expect of you. Whatever you bide on the earth, it is also bowed in heaven. Oh man, I hope you are consuming this. Whatever we bide, whatever we say, we don't like it. Whatever we see, it is oppressive. Whatever is from the devil, whatever is the opinion of man, tainted with the evil, and the wickedness. And we say we buy this spirit. We buy this spirit in our country. We buy the spirit of confusion. We buy the spirit of chaos. We buy the spirit of disobedience. We buy the spirit of disloyalty. We buy the spirit of whatever spirit. You know you see. Even in your own family. In your life. Even should you see a spirit. That is encroaching on you. And it's messing up your life. You tell you spirit hear me. I refuse you. According to word of God. In Matthew 18, 18. I have been given authority. As a saint. As a child of God. To bide you. You spirit. I bide you from my life. I bide you. I read your operation. In operation or ineffective. Inefficient in my life. I declare my life I has the destiny. It's a bright life. I declare I will live. I will not die. I declare I'm a child of God. And as long as I leave this world, I'm going to enjoy every bounty, every blessing the Lord my God has given me. I refuse to be a victim. I take my position to be a victor. I take my position to be a blessed child of God. And even as I live as a child of God and drawing in all my blessings, I will bring my blessings to my family. I'll bring my blessings everywhere I go because the favor of God is upon my life. Amen. Yes, I hope you're getting it. And he continues to say, whatever you lose, will you be loosed. Here, have you lose? The good will of God. Have you lose 
the blessings of God, the blessings of God upon my life, upon my family, upon our church. Well, you know, you lose them. You say, yeah, I lose this. I lose this financial blessing. I lose this spiritual blessing. I lose this healthy blessing. Yeah. If you're getting what I'm saying, give me a wave of a leg. Yeah, some of you are not following. Can you lift up your hand in the air and wave at me? Yeah, now I can see. I was not seeing before. Now I can see. He was saying, I lose. How do we lose? You know, possibly, how do we lose? It's like that. Yeah. Can you try to do something like this? Let's do a prophetic action. I am losing. God's blessings upon my life. And even as you're saying that, I want you to say after me, I'm losing God's blessings upon my life. I'm losing God's favor upon my life. I'm losing God's blessings upon my family, upon my church, upon my ministry. Hey! Are you getting it? That's what it means to lose. Oh man, I can't finish this. Eh? Now, another thing, you know, still you, when we are talking about our greatness, you see the Bible says that in the book of Psalms, another word of us. Let's see this. The book of Psalms 139. Uh, if we are not able to finish, that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do it in next week, God willing. You know? Um, Psalms 139 and verse 14. What does it say? Psalms, the book of Psalms. 139 and verse 14. I will praise you. Let me read it for you. Just in the case we are, it's, not, uh, it's not displayed. I will praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Ha <laughs> ha, man, I love that. Now listen to this. Marvelous are your works. And that my soul knows very well. Marvelous are your works. The book of Psalms 139 14. He's talking about I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Another aspect of my greatness. Another aspect of, you know, your greatness. You know, I want you to understand we are a wonder to behold. Can you say, I am a wonder to behold? Yeah, you are. That's what you are. You know, you may go to the mirror and look yourself at the mirror. I don't know what you saw this morning before you came to church. What did you see? I wish you had heard this message. Because uh, you would have looked to yourself in the mirror and you say, yes, I can see the greatness. I can see the greatness of God in my life. I can see the wonder of God on me. Yeah, that's all that is there. Do not allow the devil because the devil will tell you you are ugly. You look horrible. You look uh, ancient. You look irrelevant. You look and he can tell you many, many, many things. But don't believe him. He is a liar. And he is the father of all lies. You know that. Uh -huh. You are a wonder to behold. Can you tell your neighbor, you know, seated next to you and tell him or him, I am a wonder to behold. Yeah. And I, let me just cite a few things here. You know, that, uh, you know, I will just mention uh, because our time is gone here. Oh man, I can't believe even I've not touched any one of these wonderful components. But I want you to see, you are a wonder. You, do you know your heart? Your heart. Now, your anatomical heart. Your anatomical heart is amazing. It's amazing in this sense. Since the conception of you in your mother's womb, I don't know, I don't remember, you know, how many days when you are your heart was some days, possibly, I don't know, a week. Some of you who are medical people, you know, who do a, a lot of that stuff, you can uh, remember very quickly, you know. But I, one thing I would say, within days, the days of your life, your heart is beating. Just think about it. After conception, possibly one week later, I'll tell you, within 10 days or something like that, your heart starts to beat. <laughs> That's amazing. And has continued to beat. 
And even now it is beating. And they will never stop beating until your life on earth is over. Ah, it continues beating. And especially now you are born, you are an adult. Did you know an adult, an adult heart, will beat 60 to 80 times a minute with some rest of milliseconds? Your heart also rests, by the way. <laughs> the reason why you hear the sound, rap, dap, rap, dap. It is resting a little bit. You know, just milliseconds. But within one minute, your heart has pumped volume of about five liters. You can imagine how five liters. You know the five liters bottle? Just see that. You know, if you buy milk, hey, today we are going to buy milk, five liters going home. Ah, that five liters. The heart, your heart, which is, uh, they say, a rough way to, esti to estimate the size of your heart is your fist. That's how big your heart, your heart may be. And in if one minute, it pumps five liters. I want you to help me to do some arithmetic. Five liters per minute to take, blood, to take blood all over your body so that your body is well perfused. Oxygen, nutrients. That's how we are created. Five liters per minute. What is that? Let's go for a day. In an hour, in an hour, how much will it have pumped if one minute is, 24, is uh, five liters? Huh? How many? In, in one hour, it will be how much? 300 liters. Is that right? Wow. For you to understand, you know, sometimes we have to use comparison for us to, to get the message sync. If one minute the heart has pumped five liters, give it one, one hour, 60 minutes, that is 300 liters. How much is 300 liters? Let's use the jelly cans. There are some jelly cans I see, you know, uh, in front of the church, they are bringing milk. One jelly can has 50 liters. So six, is it? Am I at the medical right, uh, uh, bishop, uh, pastor? So six jelly can cans within one hour. Huh? Oh, to put it in another way, it's more than one drum <laughs> of volume of the blood the heart has beaten, the strokes of the heart have released into your body within one hour. One drum of blood has circulated. So you can understand that this blood is not simply just having athletic exercise, moving every corner or doing a marathon. No, it is carrying nutrients. It's cutting, you know, uh, nutrients the body needs, the minerals, the glucose, blah, blah. We can go on on. So that your body can continue functioning. And did you know all these things are done even when you are asleep? Of course, when you are asleep, the heart says, I need to rest also a little bit. Not completely. Have you reduced my workload? Have you not uh, pumped as hard? That the reason why the rate, the rage of your heartbeat, you know, uh, goes, uh, you know, from 60 to 80, 90. But when you start, uh, if you come to the church like the way we were dancing here, and saying hallelujah and glory be to God. You know what the heart was doing? He said, well, I can hear the hallelujah. I can see the dancing. I can see some activity, physical activity taking place. Let me work harder. <laughs> so you, your heart is starting beating harder. To provide again those nutrients. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, you, you, when you get some of these concepts, you start seeing the wonder of God. You start seeing yourself as a wonder. And in all those things I've said, there are people God has given us. I don't have time. I'm sorry. Because, uh, you know, I've only given you part A of the message. We are talking about the connectors 
of our greatness. Who are these people? Who are this group of people that are making our life great? That are making us uh, to continue appreciating we are fearful and wonderful mind. Who are these people that uh, we are connecting with, uh, that they are helping us to see, yes, we are men and women of dominion. We have authority. We have the favor of God. We have greatness of God in our life. You come on Sunday and come with a friend so that you may we may continue with the party B of the message. Please, let's just stand on our feet. And I can see some of you are reluctant. Well, what do I do? Should I continue with, you know, I want, we'll be late and I don't want you to be late. But what I've told you is adequate for now. Ah, hallelujah. Tell somebody standing next to you. You are standing next to somebody who is a wonder to behold. I am a wonder to behold. I am a person that is carrying greatness of God. I pray that the Lord will give you revelation and uh, even as you continue meditating on that. I've, give, I've only given you two scriptures. You know, is it two or three? Yeah, three. Genesis 1. And I would like you to read it again. You know, and meditate on that. Genesis 1 and verse 26. Talking about, let's create man in our image. In our likeness. And then, I want you to go to Psalms 139 and verse 14. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And finally, as an assignment, I also want you to meditate on Matthew 18, 18. The word of God, it says, what does it say? It says you have been given power to bite and to lose. Oh man, wonderful scriptures. I hope, uh, I hope you meditate upon them. Lift up your hands. And I want you to say, you know, within, uh, uh, within uh, a few seconds, uh, I want you to speak greatness in your life. I want you to speak greatness to your life. Speak greatness. It all begins with you capturing it and allowing that, uh, you know, that mindset to come to you and say, yes, I am created with the likeness of God. Oh, yes, I'm created with the image of God. Oh, yes, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for my likeness, my likeness of my God. I thank you, God, for the spirit you have put in me. Oh, yes, the spirit of greatness, the spirit to help me to relate to thee, my God. The spirit to help me to relate with my maker. The spirit to help me to relate with my redeemer. Oh, my savior. Oh, yes, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for the spirit you have given me. That is spirit to help me. Oh, yes, to make choices. That is spirit to help me to make the right choices in my life. In the mighty name of the king of glory. Oh, yes, I'll make the right choices. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will live a life of bright choices in the mighty name of the king of glory I refuse to be a victim but I am a victor in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of the king of glory I take my place I take my position as a child of God in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of the king of glory thank you dear Lord God receive all the glory receive all the honor receive all the majesty in the mighty name of the king of glory I take my dominion I take my dominion I take the authority the Lord my God has given me the authority over my circumstances authority against whatever is ordered in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Oh ye rama magazeka yantola mama bach Oh ye ri mala mama bebe gazeke li mala bakach Ye ri mala mama baba bakayesh Ye kara mama baba 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 kochingeri ni dilila Oh ye ri mala mama baba kasikeri ni dilila Ye ri mala mama baba baba In the mighty name of the king of glory Yes 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be into your mighty holy name. Give you all the glory and honor. I pray, dear Lord God, for your people. I commit your people before you. I declare your blessings, your favor, oh dear Lord God, upon all of us, even the people who may be watching us online. Oh God of glory, minister to us. Meet us at the very point of our need. Help us, dear Lord God, to appreciate our greatness, the greatness that you have put in us. Oh, our dominion. Oh, thank you, dear Lord God. We give you all the glory and honor and majesty. Thank you for the week ahead of us. Go before us, dear Lord God. Even as you go before us in the coming week, I declare your favor, your protection, your goodness upon all of us. May you prosper in whatever you're going to do in the coming week. May the goodness of God, may the greatness of God continue to function and to inspire you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's give our Lord a mighty hand clap. Amen. Praise the Lord.